Hey, I watched Anola Holmes 2 tonight. I showed Ja Anola, the first Anola Holmes last weekend. Having watched it with Jackie a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, we watched the second one, which I enjoyed, I think, pretty much as much as the first. It's very charming, uh, kind of fantasy of a Victorian England where there is a younger sister of Sherlock Holmes and she's plucky and she's played with great charisma by um, Mil Billy, Millie, Bobby Brown, Bobby, Br Bobby, oh god damn it, I can't remember her name, you know, the Stranger Girl, Stranger, Stranger Things Girl, uh, and who's, who's, uh, Sherlock Holmes is Superman, uh, Henry Cavill, who I, I find far more likable in this role. If he does nothing else, this is something to remind you that this guy is a, is a movie star and has just charisma to burn. And he, he, he and Billy Bobby Brown, I'm going to go with that, have just, they, they're, they bounce off each other quite well in their scenes together. They use Sherlock as a sort of spice. Actually, they probably use Sherlock a little bit more here, which is, in some ways, as much as I enjoy Henry Cavill, you could almost have less. Um... I enjoy that they 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 do colorblind casting. Uh, it allows for far more actors. It allows for interesting kind of plays of subtext. Of there's like a gay a girl who's obviously kind of got Asian you know, mixed Asian background, uh, black characters. Uh, the, the you know the, the the person who's revealed to be the villain in who I spotted the second she started talking to Enola. Uh, that, oh, you're, you're it, you're, it's you, and wow, you're good, uh, I really enjoy, I really enjoyed her, uh, spoiler, the big bad at the end is actually a her, uh, and is a, it's, it's in the kind of the, the, uh, Black Panther sort of thing is like a fully justified villain, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, even though not really that concerned about who gets murdered along the way, so, Thus, you have you have that kind of balancing out uh, with popular entertainment of oh they have a point but oh they went too far so we can't we, they they have to be the villain versus going no they had a point and uh, you know it's the actual society around who are the murdering assholes who are killing hundreds and hundreds of magic girls and stuff like that um, yeah I, I enjoyed that it uses uh, kind of a little bit of actual Victorian history. Uh, in there, uh, that um, the Chapman, oh, I can't remember her first name, was actually a, um, was the missing redheaded girl, was actually a, a union, uh, one of the union leaders that led the strike of the Matchstick Girls. So yeah, I enjoyed all that. I mean, there's stuff that you kind of go, it's like, Nola Holmes is always walking around with her hair loose. Uh, she doesn't have a chaperone. She's just kind of going through life. Uh -huh. And you kind of like, you, you're doing this because you're the star. And it's interesting. You look in the background and everyone else has got, all the women have their hair up. They all have hats on. Millie, you know, Nola never does. But that's because she's a star. And this is, this is our fantasy of what it would be like to be in Victorian England and telling it like it is. And stuff like that so you know it, it's it's remarkably devoid of the uh, racism sexism uh, anti-semitism uh, the yellow per peril uh, it's, it's, it's remarkably devoid of a lot of stuff like that it'd be especially be, become uncomfortable because a lot of the people who that we would probably see as the progressives of the time were probably also very racist and that would be not great for a fantasy fantasy world and I mean I guess you know it's it's like who this is it is it is it is a happy fantasy world you, sometimes I would I do kind of wonder like you know who is this for and who is it meant to comfort sometimes I think it's maybe not meant to comfort uh, people who are oppressed but uh, people who whose ancestors, like my own, were probably the oppressors. Uh, I know that I, you know, in my, the Scottish side of my family, we owned, um, we owned uh, mines. We owned, you know, mines that uh, 
were, you know, had workers in them that got sold to the government and that probably were horribly uh, abused by, you know, people like Thatcher and stuff like that, or allowed people to. I don't know. My, I think my grandfather got out a lot of the, a lot of that stuff, uh, put his stocks into tobacco and, and alcohol. So was wise investments, always bet on sin, even though he wasn't particularly a sinful man himself. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, 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 it's a fun kind of fantasy of history. Uh, there's some ways I wonder if by the colorblind casting and the kind of like um, touching on, lightly touching on stuff, but not really kind of dwelling into just how, how gnarly uh, the actual thoughts of these times was, it doesn't maybe do it a disservice. It becomes, we have our fantasy that we tell ourselves about the past versus the actuality. But yet at the same time, it's, it's thrilling to watch um, people of color get to populate these worlds uh, and tell stories that aren't about oppression. Um, and that, you know, I'm assuming that maybe that is the, the audience, one of the audiences for it. It's not just white people trying to tell themselves a happy story, but it's people of color saying, hey, we could have lived back then, and if things had been different, we could have been having the adventures too. Now, Anola herself is white. She is a woman. We've gotten as far to, to kind of start imagining women having exciting adventures in the past. Um, and I think there are other stories out there of, you know, uh, Bridgerton and stuff like that, where it's like people of color getting to have exciting adventures too, uh, which I wouldn't deny anyone. So yeah, I enjoyed myself. It was fun. It was fun. It's just got some interesting questions in there. Is it a, is it a conservative dream message? Is it a woke dream message? Is it, is it over? Is it just a kind of a white liberal happy fantasy world where there isn't any uh, any problems? I mean, it's a world that shows problems, but it shows um, the people who are doing the stuff uh, getting punished for it, which actually probably wasn't the case. They they did. They, there may have been inconveniences, but obviously, uh, um, businesses that exploit their workers still continue to continue on to this day and are, uh, you know, Amazon and stuff like that. Some of the uh, Apple uh, are the biggest companies. Wal uh, Walmart are the biggest companies in the world are stu super successful because that they are good exploiters, um, efficient, successful, super efficient, successful exploiters of their workforce. So, force. so I have a feeling maybe someone who is, of the left in the labor field might not feel so warm and glowy about an old homes. It is a fantasy after all. All right. That's my thoughts. I've been Jay. More videos later.